The market for compressed natural gas, or CNG, is starting to expand across the country. With lower fuel costs and cleaner emissions, more automakers and fleets are turning to CNG as a vehicle fuel. CNG actually has over 40 years of real-world experience uh, as a vehicle transportation fuel. So although it's something that's just re-emerging in our discussion, we actually have millions of road miles, and that means millions of real-world experience that vehicle and en engine manufacturers can draw on. So both in this country and in, in other markets, such as Europe, South America, and Asia, what that means is that, uh, that a, a lot of the, the technical challenges that, uh, and, and the untested aspects of some of the other alternatives are simply not issues for CNG. We have experience working with the uh, fire marshals, with working with other, uh, with other regulators. So there's a comfort level and a, a knowledge base for, for CNG vehicles that some of the other alternatives can't point to. California has always been a strong environmental leader. They've had policies which have really tried to attack their air quality problems and natural gas vehicles have been a perfect fit for that. So because we had early start there, that's still in the lead. Um, but other states that have been very strong and also have been uh, important in terms of their policies as well as uh, their, uh, their economic incentives and things uh, include states like New York. Um, we've seen lots of great activity in, in Texas. And what's really exciting, uh, uh, and Utah has always been a very good market because of the low cost of gas and the good infrastructure that they've developed out there through the gas company. But it, with the very exciting thing that, that we see is that we're getting calls from public and private fleets across all the states, states that we're not used to getting that kind of interest or activity. Uh, we've got a, a pocket of activity that's really bubbled up in, um, in Florida. We see a lot of activity in the Carolinas. Uh, you look at Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, that entire area where we have a lot of shale gas development, and in Pennsylvania. Uh, and we see lots of interest and we're starting to see some fleets taking off. People don't realize that, that all of the major automakers that are in the North American market also offer bi-fuel vehicles, and by that I mean a, a vehicle that runs on diesel or gasoline and then with a simple switch changes over to a small natural gas tank on board. Uh, so those biofuel vehicles give you the best of both worlds, right? You can have cleaner burning natural gas. If you exceed that range of perhaps 100 or so miles, uh, then for very long trips you can switch over to gasoline or diesel. And that alleviates a lot of the early infrastructure concerns that people have about the availability of, of refueling for a CNG vehicle. What was called the Civic GX has been around since 1998, I believe it is. And it's, it's still to this day is the cleanest production vehicle out there. Uh, that's one vehicle that's available. There's a growing selection of vehicles that are coming from these small volume manufacturers who have the EPA and or CARB certified systems uh, to retrofit their existing gasoline vehicle to run on natural gas. And some examples, I don't know if I'll get them all, but uh, we've got Ford Focuses, we've got Ford Fusions and the Mercury and Milan. Uh, we have all the different pickup trucks from Chevy and Ford and we recently had the introduction of the Dodge Ram 1500 as well as the Mitsubishi Raider. Uh, so we're seeing a growing selection there. I think that we're really, we're on the verge of a, a real dramatic acceleration in infrastructure for CNG and LNG. Today we have about a thousand CNG LNG stations across the country. You know, I think uh, 10 years from now we could easily have uh, five to 10 times that many. Learn more about CNG today. Visit cngnow.com.